In this video, we're going to walk through the StealthWatch Cloud Console to learn a bit more about where to find things and how to configure it. Let's dive in. When you first sign into StealthWatch Cloud, you'll find yourself in the Overview Dashboard. This dashboard will show the recent open alerts on top, and below that you'll see the endpoint count and traffic summaries for the last week. If I click on the Source tab, I can see the subnet sources for the traffic that is summarized. Some alerts require a certain amount of historical data to be gathered before they can be enabled. If your StealthWatch Cloud deployment is under 37 days old, it will state how many days of data have been collected on top. The next dashboard we'll take a look at is the Network Dashboard. This dashboard provides a summary of network traffic, alerts, and observations. On the top of this dashboard summarizes alerts including open alerts and historical alerting trends. We can click either on the alert number itself or on the View All link on the right to be directed to the same place, the Alert Dashboard. Below the alerts is the Daily Traffic section, which includes views on the traffic or by the connections that StealthWatch Cloud has seen over the last 24 hours. Below that is the Devices section that displays the endpoints seen by hour over the last day. By clicking View All, it takes us to the Endpoints dashboard. There is also a section for encrypted traffic that shows the trend of inbound and outbound traffic over the last day, and how much of that was encrypted versus non-encrypted. If I click View All there, I'll also be taken to the Endpoints dashboard. Scrolling down, we can see the top devices, the total traffic, and the seven-day trend. Next to that is the top DNS devices, or DNS servers. This shows the total traffic and seven-day trend as well for these devices. Below that is the High Risk Countries widget. If we've defined High Risk Countries and traffic has been detected coming or going from there, it would alert here. In my case, I haven't configured any High Risk Countries, so this is blank. Below that is a summary of observation seen and the historic trend. Observations are not technically alerts, but they can factor into something becoming an alert. The AWS Visualizations dashboard is used when you have integrated AWS with StealthWatch Cloud. Let's take a look through some of the tabs. The CloudTrail tab predictably shows us a view of our CloudTrail logs. StealthWatch Cloud takes advantage of AWS's APIs and security features and is able to pull data from CloudTrail to get additional context on instances. If an action is performed in the customer's AWS environment, it's recorded in the CloudTrail API and can be shared with StealthWatch Cloud. Under the Network Graph tab, we can see an AWS-related spider graph with all of our AWS resources listed here. The IAM tab gives us various information about our IAM permissions. I don't have AWS integrated anymore with this, so I'll move on from this tab. Amazon Inspector is an automated security assessment service that helps us improve the security and compliance of instances deployed in AWS by performing vulnerability assessment of that instance. StealthWatch Cloud can pull information from Amazon Inspector for additional context. The Alerts dashboard displays all the open alerts for the enterprise. If you want to see some of the different alert types available, go to the Gears tab and then click Alert Types and Priorities. Listed here should be over 60 types of built-in alerts. Alerts are gradually enabled during the 36-day baseline period for StealthWatch Cloud. If you want to prioritize certain types of alerts, you can do so here as well. Let's go back to the Alerts dashboard. We can change the status of an alert to open, closed, or unsnoozed if that alert has been snoozed. We can also assign an alert to a specific user so they can investigate this further. Clicking on an alert itself will pull up more information about it to allow us to investigate it fully. In this case, we can see that this endpoint was communicating with IP address 40.121.3.131 using TLS 1.0, which is considered an insecure protocol. The thing I really appreciate about StealthWatch Cloud is that the alerts are human-readable and it's very easy to see the who, when, where, and what that triggered the alert. If we've already assigned this alert to someone, it should show in the comment section. In my case, I assigned it to myself, so it's showing right here. Now let's go back to the alerts dashboard. 
If I wanted to see all of the alerts and not just the open ones, I can go to status and then choose all. We can see here that there was one closed alert that was previously not showing. The reason why I closed this alert is because my ICE instance 10.1.100.21 was scanning hosts, which is a normal function. We can also create custom tags on top if we'd like to tag certain alerts. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and create a tag called Demo Lab, and I'll assign the tag to my closed incident. You can see now that the Demo Lab tag is showing. If we have a lot of alerts that we need to sort through, we should be able to sort them by newest, oldest, type, and source. Next, we'll go to the Observations dashboard. Observations are the building blocks of alerts. An observation is simply a fact about the traffic that was recorded. In fact, the majority of observations are not attached to an alert. On the Types tab, we can see the types of alerts and observations attached to them. The By Devices tab shows the endpoints and the total count of observations associated with them. The Models section contains several dashboards and reporting on endpoints, traffic, detailed flow searches, and subnets. We'll start with the Endpoints dashboard. The Endpoints graph displays a count of monitored entities for the past 30 days. You can view more detailed information about any given day. The Endpoints overview shows detailed information about each entity that has been monitored by StealthWatch Cloud. If we click on a given endpoint, we should see the possible roles for that device. Next, we'll explore the Traffic Model Dashboard. This dashboard contains information about traffic that the StealthWatch Cloud system monitored. By default, the system displays information for the past 24 hours, but you can change that time frame. The Traffic Overview on top gives us information about the transmitted traffic and the sources of that traffic. The top IP table displays information about internal and external IP addresses that transmitted the most traffic during the filtered period of time. The top ports table displays information about the internal and external ports over which endpoints used to transmit the most traffic. Next, we'll look at the Session Traffic Model Dashboard. This dashboard contains detailed information about specific session traffic that StealthWatch monitored. By default, the system displays information from the past 24 hours, but that could be modified as well as the criteria for the displayed sessions. I'm going to go ahead and do a filter for a specific host. 10.1.100.40. I'm also going to go ahead and change the filter time. The Traffic tab displays information about the sessions that match the filtered criteria. The Traffic chart will be a displayed bar chart that represents transmitted data in a matching session over the past 48 hours. It might take a moment to re render, so I'll go ahead and move on. The Rejects table displays information about match criteria that was rejected for relevant reasons. In this case, there were no rejects. The Connection Graph is a web graph that shows entities as nodes and edges as connections established between entities. Next, we'll move on to the Roles dashboard. This contains information about entities that have been matched to certain roles based on their traffic. The active roles listed in the left-hand column displays each role with at least one matching entity detected. If I click on a plus sign to expand a role, the next column in the middle displays the selected role. The matched endpoint is then displayed in the Matching Sources column. As you can see, if I hover my mouse over that endpoint, I can discover more information on it. Now let's go to the Encrypted Traffic Dashboard. This dashboard makes use of enhanced NetFlow for network devices that are capable of sending it to the StealthWatch Cloud Sensor. Right on the top of this dashboard, we can filter what is viewed based on IP address, ports, protocol, key exchange, algorithm, key length, MAC, and time frame. I'm going to go ahead and filter this based on a week time frame, and then click Update. Now we can see information about who communicated on which protocol, what algorithms were used, what port, what time, and so on based on our filter. On the bottom, we can see that there were over 255,000 encrypted conversations monitored by StealthWatch Cloud in that time frame. Next, let's go to the External Services dashboard. 
This dashboard contains session information we can search about selected external services such as file storage applications, remote access applications, and social media sites. Because my lab is pretty sparse, it probably won't pull up anything if I search for it all, but in a production environment, these results can be pretty interesting. The User Activity Dashboard contains information about users that use the system and observations associated with that user. It's pretty sparse in my lab, so we'll move on from this dashboard. So let's turn our attention to the top of the StealthWatch Cloud Console. The magnifying glass provides us with a pretty nice way to search for IP addresses, host names, or domains. Let's go ahead and test it out with 10.1.100.40 to pull up the traffic report for that host. Each device is tracked and modeled, which is the baseline that StealthWatch Cloud uses to track anomalous behavior and detect deviations relevant to security. I'm going to go ahead and change the time frame filter on top so you can see some traffic for the specific host. So right on top, we see the traffic overview over time. We can scroll down and see the connected IPs, the top ports, and so on. Back at the top of this dashboard, let's click on the IP address of 10.1.100.40, and from the dropdown, let's choose Device. Let's go ahead and give it a moment to load. The device dashboard summary lists the traffic details on a given day, including internal and external connections, byte counts, open alerts and observations for the device, the auto-identified role, and the traffic profiles. Navigating to the traffic tab, we can see even more granular detail of all the IPs and host names that connected to this endpoint. We can filter by internal, external, or new. The Profiling tab provides us with more information about how this device was profiled, how much traffic was passed serving a certain role, how many connections, and so on. It provides us with a little bit more information to understand how a device was assigned to a role in StealthWatch Cloud. And last is the DNS tab, which provides DNS information about connections. So it looks like we've gone through all of our dashboards, so the next thing we'll take a look at is our settings. I'm going to start with Settings and Alerts. On this screen, we can adjust the amount of days before an alert expires. The default is 14. On the right-hand side, we have a few more options. The first one is to configure alert priority. I showed you this before, but this is just where we can adjust the sensitivity level for specific types of alerts. The next option is to configure IP scanners. If we have scanners in our network, this can allow us to suppress alerts for a specific IP address, site or block, and so on. For the Configure Country Watch List option, this is where we can list certain countries based on geolocation information, so we can be alerted when we see traffic to or from them. The Configure Watch List option allows us to utilize our own third-party IP lists, so we can be alerted if we see traffic from or to those IP addresses. The Subnets tab allows us to enter subnets in so we can adjust the sensitivity of alerting and monitoring for those networks. If the sensitivity is higher, that means that the threshold for an alert is lowered. This also isn't just limited to local LAN subnets. As you can see, you can define AWS, GCP, and VPN subnets. Under Site Management, we can add users to use StealthWatch Cloud, as well as configure the session timeout for the StealthWatch Cloud console. The Sensor tab shows us our connected StealthWatch Cloud sensors and their health. This is pretty self-explanatory. If we click Change Settings, we have some additional options. We can choose the monitored IP address space for the sensor. We can choose what type of NetFlow or IPFIX data to accept and on which ports. If we would like to send alerting and event information to a local SIM, we can configure a syslog server or SNMP information here. The Services Webhooks tab allows us to configure StealthWatch Cloud to export alerts to popular tools. It natively supports Amazon S3, SNS, SQS, WebEx Teams, Datadog, Email Alerts, GCP PubSub, GCP Storage, PagerDuty, Slack, Splunk, and Webhooks. Going back to the Integrations tab, StealthWatch Cloud supports integrations to monitor AWS, Azure, GCP, and Kubernetes. It also integrates with Meraki and Umbrella to provide additional contextual information to the rest. 
The last thing we're going to take a look at are a couple reports in the help menu on top. The metering report page contains the average flows per second monitored by StealthWatch Cloud. This graph should display the past calendar month, which is kind of blank right now. The monthly flows report page contains the number of effective flows monitored per day. The subnet report page contains the subnets that the system detects as transmitting traffic. This will include an overview of all the active subnets, the traffic that these subnets generated, the number of active IP addresses in the subnet, and a table displaying traffic transmitted between tr the subnets. The default for this page displays just the past 24 hours worth of traffic, but that can be modified as well. The last part that I would like to review is the visibility report. This provides a nice high-level executive report that can be downloaded in PDF form. It provides information such as an overview of the monitored network, SNMB risks, DNS risks, remote access breaches, telnet usage, traffic to high-risk countries, and so on. And with that, that brings us to the end of our dive into the StealthWatch Cloud Console.